Hello and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Laney Shaughnessy and I'll be your host this evening. Hope everybody's doing well. I want to say hi to everybody that's joining me tonight. And uh, hopefully your evening is going well. Thanks for joining me. Now, we're going to be uh, doing some modeling in Aspire tonight. Now, you guys, uh, you know, from time to time, I try to jump back and forth from VCar Pro to Aspire and stuff. Uh, if we have enough time tonight, I'll show you how to make this same design using uh, a V-Carve, uh, you know, the vectors that we draw up and um, creating it as a V-Carve project. If we don't have enough time tonight to, to do that once we finish the modeling, then next week we'll kind of come back and that'll be the first thing we do next week is uh, show how to take the same vectors and do it as a V-Carve toolpath uh, to create a similar design if you don't have a spire uh, to model. But I would like you to, if you don't have a spire, even though you don't have a spire, uh, if you don't, I'd like you to stick with me tonight because uh, the way we combine models and the way we use the component tree and everything, uh, that would be the same techniques and tips and stuff when you're working in VCarve Desktop or Pro uh, and you're putting models together you know, that might come with the software or that you purchased online and things. So there's gonna be some things to learn in here for you. And we're gonna be drawing vectors for the first part of this class uh, so, you know, there's going to be some techniques that some of you that have watched me, uh, you know, every week that we're here, uh, there's going to be some techniques that you're familiar with uh, when we're creating this. But we're going to make a pretty cool uh, clock face and, um, and uh, uh, kind of show you, uh, you know, uh, how to go about doing that. And uh, hopefully you'll pick up some tips from there. So welcome, everybody. Uh, really appreciate it again, once again, for joining me. It really means a lot to me. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to launch uh, the new channels uh, coming up and everything. And with that, some new apparel has come in uh, and stuff. And I wanted to kind of show off. Let's see if I can show off, you know, the new Spindle TV shirt. But uh, in a variety of colors. <laughs> but um, uh, we've got some, uh, uh, some new shirts and hats and things coming. And then when the winter comes, we'll get some other cool apparel like pulley uh, hoodies and jackets and stuff but uh, yeah my shirts came in the other day and I was really uh, happy with that all right with that being said let's go ahead and get over to what channel am I on channel 2 uh, let's switch over to channel 2 here da -ba -da -bum. Uh, channel 2 there we go and let's get me down in the bottom left hand corner. Where's my button? There we go. So this is an example, an example uh, that I made up earlier um, for the uh, Spindle TV subscribers that pay for training and stuff. They received this model in their packets of models for our August projects and stuff. But this is gonna be an example of what we're making tonight I just want to give you kind of a preliminary view so you're not sitting there through the class going okay what's this gonna look like when it's all said and done uh, but uh, yeah so this is this is that but we're gonna use a different emblem in the middle I'm gonna show you how the um, how we can create this clock face and we can put anything that we want in the middle of it you know uh, and stuff but I just want to show you this example all right Let's go ahead and uh, let me save this. Bear with me just one second. Always save your work. <clears throat> now, last week I, um, I created a model and I was in the very high, extremely high resolution and everything when um, when I created that model and stuff. And, and uh, when we got to the toolpath side, it was a bit slow. Uh, so I'm still gonna work in a very high resolution, uh, but probably not the maximum in what I build this in. When I build models, I build them in the maximum resolution uh, and everything. And um, the uh, tonight we're gonna go with a standard. So let this save, it's, uh, it's saving, there we go. We're gonna go ahead and uh, come down here and we're gonna open up a new Aspire window. Okay, and then we're gonna close out of the old one. 
All right, so we're gonna start here from the beginning. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file. Uh, now, when you click on create a new file, the basic resolution options are standard high and very high. Uh, I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm gonna cancel out of this. I'm gonna hold down the shift key when I create a new file. And this way uh, in the model resolution, I get two additional options, the extremely high and the uh, maximum. Uh, I, I typically, when I'm designing models and stuff, I'll typically design in the maximum resolution, but tonight we're gonna go extremely high. It's gonna give me about eight million pixels so things aren't so pixelated and stuff, and we're gonna go from there. Now, the actual clock face without the emblems in the middle, I'm gonna show you how you can add actual you know, uh, carvings in there, V carvings or uh, models or things like that, uh, You know, models that you can buy on designandmake.com or CG Trader and things, uh, you know, and stuff. But um, uh, just the blank clock face that we're going to create, uh, I am going to make that uh, available. Uh, but it won't be a free download. Uh, it might be like five or six bucks per download or something like that. And uh, I'll put uh, a um, link out in the description of the video when all is said and done. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at our job setup here. It's going to be a single-sided job. We're not going to do it as a two-sided job where we would normally cut the back out and everything uh, for the clock mechanism to go into, you know, because this is going to be a clock. It's going to look like a watch face, but it's going to be a clock. We're not going to do that uh, tonight. That's just a simple pocket cut and stuff um, that uh, that someone, if they imported this model in, they could set up that, uh, you know, depending on the size of their uh, clock kit they get. And speaking of clock kit, that's where I get my clocks from, uh, my clock mechanisms and stuff is clockit.com. And uh, I believe they spell it with a K. Uh, so um, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice place to get, you know, uh, clock mechanisms and, and all that good stuff. But this is going to be a single sided job tonight and it's going to be 24 inches by 24 inches by three quarters of an inch thick. I typically go thicker and all, but actually I want to try to, you know, make this in a, a three-quarter inch board. Um, and if anything changes or varies, uh, we'll, uh, we'll maximize it up. As a matter of fact, I'd much rather reduce it down than maximize it up. So I'm going to go with a thickness of one and a half inches. So I'm going to double that up. We're going to, for me, I zero out my X and Y, uh, or I'm sorry, my Z on the machine bed on my waste board. Uh, because typically I'm either carving all of my surface or something, but my wasteboard is, is you know is pretty consistent for my tool changes and all. So I use the machine bed, uh, which is the, what the wasteboard is considered, the machine bed in the software, or you can use your material surface, whichever one you would want to set your software up to. And I always work from the bottom left corner um, to uh, for my X Y datum. So with that being said, we're going to click OK. And we're going to get started in here by drawing off the base. And uh, if you guys have any stream or audio issues or anything, let me know uh, in the comment section. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, hopefully you can hear me clearly and things are good. All right, so we're going to start off with the circle tool, the draw circle tool. And I'm going to start off with a 23 inch diameter circle. And I could either freehand draw it, bring my uh, mouse into the center of my board and drag out that 23 inch uh, circle, or I could have just typed it in and got to the center and clicked and it would have created it as well. Okay. Um, now I want to offset this inward uh, for my inner circle and I'm going to go 20 inches. Now I can hold down my shift key. Uh, double click on it to put it in transform mode. I can hold down my shift key and I could drag this in, you know, till it's at a diameter of 20 inches, which I really don't, I wouldn't know. And it's also the shift and control, not the, just the shift key, um, shift and control. But for me, uh, either using the offset tool or using the circle tool and redrawing another circle, either one of those two is going to be a better option. Uh, if I was going to use the draw circle tool, then I would just come in here with a 20 inch circle, come to the middle of my material and click to create that. Or I could have come into the offset tool and offset inward that three inches. Either way, right? So we could have done either one of the two. All right, so now that I have basically kind of like the outer frame, if you will, of the clock, 
the clock is not only going to have an outer band but it's also going to have an inner band as well that we're going to create and uh, the inner band we're going to go from this inner circle we are going to use the offset tool this time and we're going to offset inward twice so we're going to go offset inward make sure select new is selected we're going to go once and then twice okay so those two vectors that we just created are going to be the inner band of this now i'd like to have you know some clock faces have kind of the dimple around the outer edges and stuff so I'd like to go ahead and do that and I'm gonna draw a three quarter inch circle uh, for that so we'll come up here right up here and we're gonna draw a three quarter inch diameter circle 0.75 and click apply now I want that circle right in the middle of the top two vectors and for me a quick and easy way to do that is I simply draw a line. I'll come up here and snap a line at the top of this outside circle, come down and straight 90 degree line to the bottom circle, spacebar to finish. And that line has a midpoint, right? So now I can take my circle and I can grab my circle and snap it right to that midpoint and I know I'm centered in between those two areas. Okay, so uh, I really, uh, you know, it's just kind of a quick and simple way for me to align things and stuff. And now, you know, I want a variety of those circles to come all the way around uh, here. And however many you want uh, to put in there is, uh, you know, fine. If we were to uh, quickly go back in to my downloads folder and come in here and open up that 3d model again on the 3d model that I uh, created earlier uh, if we turn this around there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so there's 12 circles almost like the 12 hands of the clock you know and stuff so that's what you know kind of uh, I thought would look good because it would kind of line up with the the number hands and stuff and just give it a little bit of a, you know an impression now I want this to uh, go around evenly spaced and so I'm going to use the circular array tool down here at the offset and layout tools on the left uh, I'm gonna go to the circular copy tool and I want my rotation center to be 12 inches and 12 inches, the center of my 24 by 24 board. I want 12 copies going 360 degrees around, total angle, and I'm gonna click copy to create those. Okay, so now we have those copies there. All right, almost like we're making a ship's portal, if you will, uh, and, and all. So we've got those now not only am I going to have the hour hands, you know, or, or, or marks, if you will, but I'm also going to have the minute marks in well, as well, too. So we're going to start off with the minute marks, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to draw a rectangle. Now, the rectangle, uh, we want it to be relatively small in size, short, and narrow. Uh, so for me, a, uh, the um, height I'm going to go on this rectangle is going to be one inch tall and I'm just going to be just under three eighths inch wide uh, the number that I uh, found that worked best for me was uh, on this size project was a point three oh nine seven and I'm going to click that and that's going to give me this little narrow rectangle now I want this rectangle here to be centered on the and, and if you have your smart snapping and geometry snapping on you know you'll get this kind of dotted line showing the center of your material and I want it uh, centered there and I just want it just below that lower band okay as far as distance and everything uh, you know what what the distance is and stuff it, I mean let's measure just to see but I kind of just eyeball it uh, but let's measure a vertical distance from here to here we're just uh, you know just over 0.15 uh, inches you know just over kind of uh, 
what is that uh, 5 sixteenths um, yeah something like that and so what I'll do is I want to kind of be a specific number so I'm gonna drag this up and snap it right to that inner ring and then I can use the move tool to relatively move it on the y-axis negative number is gonna be down positive would be up we're gonna go down so I want to go negative and I'm gonna go for me I'm gonna go uh, 0.1875 which is about 3 sixteenths okay all right now this is going to be my little minute uh, marks and everything so I need 60 of these okay and so again I'm going to use that circular uh, copy tool and I'm going to again it, over here in the circular copy tool this little diagram up here if I double click on the dot in the middle it will create the center point for my rotation right the center of my board so I can click on that little dot or I could just type in 12 by 12 right and I want 60 of these going around 360 degrees and that's going to create my little minute marks okay you guys with me so far on that cool and uh, now my next mark is going to be the hour marks and stuff and I'm actually going to steal a copy of one of these so I'm going to hold down my control key and drag down a copy straight down and on this one I want the size uh, to be much longer uh, than the one inch uh, and so I'm going to go just about 1.875 inches uh, but it's going to be slightly lower and uh, I started off with 0.1875 on let's go to the size tool let's unlink the X and Y I don't want to change the width at all just the height and I started off at 0.1875 and I found that I wanted it just man just a tad bit shorter so the number that I came up with was 1.8236 that was a good number for me especially with the draft that I'm going to be putting on later and stuff so I'm going to change that 1.8236 uh, and I'm going to click apply now I don't want it right up against that mark I want it down uh, you know a, a decent distance and everything um, and so if I wanted to I could be specific by snapping it to the bottom of that and again using the move tool not that not the size tool sorry guys and girls uh, the move tool and I could move it down a certain distance and stuff uh, let's say I go negative 0.5 and bring that down to there uh, so that'll be good for me you know a half inch away now on this one I need 12 of these going around so I'm gonna come in and open up that circular array tool and I want my rotation it's 12 and 12 the center of my board and I want to go 12 around again to create the hour hands starting to look more and more like a watch right you know and it will as we start to build the models and stuff very quickly and easily we can uh, you know kind of do these layouts and stuff once we get familiar with uh, you know um, the tools and that circular array tool is great for uh, taking uh, you know things around uh, evenly spaced and stuff uh, especially when you're doing clock faces if that's kind of something that you're into uh, when it comes to your carving and all all right so now we've got uh, you know our marks and everything here and I want to start kind of grouping things together it's going to be easier for me to uh, group things together uh, to work with and stuff um, now rather than later and I could have been grouping these things as they were created because when they're created right so if I were to create that circular copy around they're all highlighted right and it's just as easy for me to hit the letter G on my keyboard to group them together instantly okay and I should have done that when I were doing all the others and stuff and uh, you know I could have now I don't have you know I, I would have to go around and you know select these things kind of one by one to group them together and as we start getting faster and faster in our design process 
you know, do the things that you need to do, know the process you need to do, create those. And if you're going to group them together so they're easier to select and deselect when you're working, then group them instantly and things like that. And if you start doing that, it'll kind of make you a little, just a slightly little bit faster in your design. So I've got them all selected. I'll hit G again. G is group, but let's go over to the tools here. And the group button is the fifth icon, fourth icon, sorry on edit objects on the top row group and then ungroup is the uh, fifth icon and G and U are the keyboard shortcuts for them group and ungroup right so now that I have those groups it'll be easy for me to select the whole design then I can come in and select on my lines to deselect those and when I say select on I'm talking I'm holding the shift key so um, oops I'm holding the shift key and I'm reselecting this so it deselects them. And while I'm holding the shift key, I can turn off those as well. And now I just have those outer hands selected and I can hit G to group them together. So now I've got my groups. It'll be much easier for me to work with, uh, with my selection and deselection process, okay? I'm gonna take my two outer rings. I'll group those together as well and also my two inner rings and group them separately so they're separate all right you guys with me so far everything going good not putting you to sleep yet cool all right now i want to work with uh some fonts now the font that i found that i liked best i went down and uh, i downloaded from defont d-a-f-o-n-t dot com uh, a font that was called uh, time and space and uh it, it had pretty uh, decent number of hands and stuff or numbers numbers and all but as I got to looking through my fonts and all I had a font that was called gratis now I may have gotten that from defont.com or it might have been part of my computer already uh, but g-r-a-t-i-s uh, it's a really nice looking font for clocks uh, and things so that's what I'm going to use for my numbers and the only numbers that I'm putting on this are the 12 and the six. It's the only two numbers I'm gonna put on here. Now, my uh, text height is gonna be three quarters, uh, or I'm sorry, 0.875. Uh, so it's gonna be uh, 13 sixteenths. And um, I'm gonna start off with the number 12. Ba -ba -bum. Okay. And actually, that's the size for the numbers up here, the second numbers. Uh, we're going to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, all the way around. Uh, and that's the actual size for those. So that, that would go up there. And so I'll make that uh, 60 for right now. Um, and so that's going to be the number for that. And that's uh, you know what that font looks like. It's a pretty decent font. So my actual numbers, my bigger numbers, the... Uh, they're gonna be one and a quarter inch tall, I believe. We're gonna go 12. And I'm not gonna go bold. I'm gonna bring that um, up here and snap it right to that line. You'll see what we'll do with that line in just a minute. And looking at that, I actually want the number as tall as my part. So I'm going to come up here and go one point. Remember my part was 1.8326 or 236, sorry, 1.8236. And I'm going to drag that and snap it down to the center. I want it the same height as that line there. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. Uh, let's do the number six. I'm gonna grab it right in the center and snap it right to the center of that line. And I've got my two numbers. Now that I have my two numbers, I can ungroup uh, this uh, selection and I'm going to hold down the shift, deselect this one, deselect that one, group the others back together, and then I can just come in and delete these uh, bars. They won't need to be here anymore, okay? So we're gonna have the 12 and the six there. Cool? Cool. All right, 
Now, the 60, I've already got the 60 in there. And what I want to do is I want to put uh, the numbers uh, every 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, you get it kind of thing. And so I want to be able to rotate these because I want my numbers straight up and down, uh, you know, and angled properly as they go around and stuff. So I'm going to uh, take my group here. I'm going to hold down my shift key and select my 60 here. And I'm going to go over to the rotate tool and I want to rotate off my center point, right? The 12 and 12. And I want to do a relative rotation. And I'm going to take 360 degrees and I'm going to divide that by 60. Hit the equal sign and that's going to give me six degrees, right? I should have known that. I could have done that math in my head, but six degrees. And now every time I click on the apply button, it will rotate over one by one. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then my next number will go here. And so my numbers are laid out for me. So I don't have to keep creating one by one. Let's go into the text tool. Let's drop over here on the text tool. Anywhere, anywhere. Let's go there. And I'm going to put my text in. So we're going to have five. Oh, five. I want a zero in front of that. Zero, five. Uh, hit the enter key 10, 15, 20, 25, all the way around 30, 40, 45, 50, 60, 65, 70, 75. Ha! <laughs> There's not 75 minutes in an hour, Laney. Let me back that up, back, back up, back up. I don't even need the 60 because I've already got it. So I'll stop at 55. All right, so I've got my numbers laid out here and I created them in what's called a text box, right? They're, they're all one uh, group right now. They're all grouped together. And I want individual lines so I can just drag and drop, drag and drop. So I'm gonna come over here and right click and break the text block into lines, okay? So now each of these text uh, items are individual. So now I can take my 05 and I can drag it over and snap it right to that rectangle, right? And I'm gonna keep the rectangle in. I'll come back at the end and remove all them. But now I'm gonna hold down my shift key, select on the 60 and my group again, go back into the rotate tool, uh, put my six degrees in there and go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? So I can drag this in and drop it and snap it in there. Do that again, select my numbers. I gotta select my numbers and my group all the way around. Uh, and uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. Drag that in there, okay? Now from 15, to 45, so 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40, those five numbers, they're actually, when, when I snap them in there, I'm gonna rotate them upside down. So let's go ahead and continue on. Let's select our 10, our five, our 60, and our group, and continue around 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now on the 20, when I bring the 20 in here, okay, I'm gonna rotate that around. I'm gonna hit the number zero key on my keyboard and I'm gonna rotate that around till it's upside down, okay? All right, cool. All right, let's select the numbers, holding that shift key down to get those selected in the group and just continue on. One, two, three, four, five. Drag this up here, snap it into place and again, hit the zero key and just rotate it upside down. And it would help if I slow down there. I'll get my, the two and the five almost look alike. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, which one's upside down? All right, so go back and so hold down that shift key. We've got to select our numbers all the way around. Now we could, um, when these numbers are selected, right, we could go ahead and group them together. That'll make it easier for us so we don't have to click every single one all the way around. So I went ahead and hit G again to kind of group that little group together. 
select my other group and let's continue roll it one two three four five bring my 30 in there snap it to the center of that rectangle rinse and repeat ladies and gentlemen hit that zero key to turn it upside down and I can select that my group and continue on around let's I don't know why I keep zooming out like that uh, that's one two three four five grab my next number snap it to that top one hit that zero key rotate it around till it's upside down select that and this uh, let's turn that group off first hold on a second let's select this this and my other number group and again I'm gonna hit G on my keyboard I'm just gonna kind of every couple of ones keep them all grouped together uh, now I can select my dashes and rotate them all one two three four five clicks grab my next number all right 40 is gonna be the last number that I rotate upside down okay so we're gonna rotate 40 upside down that'll be the last one and I can select my groups and then one two three four five 45 will just snap right into the center and I'm grabbing the number right on its center mark and snapping it to the center of that rectangle okay so we're going to uh, let's select uh, that that and my group I'm gonna hit G again to kind of group those numbers together and we're gonna finish up with two more one two three four five grab 50 throw that in there select my group one two three four five drop 55 in there and done with that I just have to do one last thing select my group and my numbers and rotate it one two three four five to get the 60 back at the top right all right so now that I have my groups and everything uh, and stuff and if you see here so uh, 5 10 and 15 they're upright 20 25 30 35 and 40 they're facing up so like if you're looking at your watch you can see them they're not upside down to you 45 and you know 45 and 15 are off to the side and then 50 and 55 now I've looked at many watch faces and everything and 90% of the watch faces I looked at this is how their numbers are laid out so I'm gonna stick with that because I think it's a great idea to work with now I need to get rid of the little dashes where all my numbers are they don't need to be there anymore so I'm gonna come in and uh, select my group of dashes I'm gonna hit U to ungroup and I'm just gonna come in and hold my shift key down and select on each one of the boxes uh, that are at the center of my numbers okay so and I got an itch on my chin for some reason um, let's come in here just gonna come in and select on those rectangles I'm holding the shift key for every click that I'm doing I'm keeping keeping that shift key shift key held down getting tongue-tied there once all my marks are you know deselected I'm gonna hit G again to group those back and now I can come in and one by one just delete those boxes that way it's just my numbers there um, and stuff All right, work my way around, get rid of each of those boxes all the way around. And now I have a pretty cool looking kind of clock face, right? And hell, we could get more crazy and things and you know, we could put in fake, they wouldn't be real, you know, but we could put in fake uh, barometers or you know, uh, you know, GPS boxes or whatever you want in the center, right? I'm gonna put a nice medallion you'll see that medallion when we get it uh, when we start to uh, uh, get the um, the parts built but this is it for the clock layout as far as all the vectors that we need we're done now we're ready to start modeling okay so we're gonna switch from the drawing tab over to the modeling tab and I'm gonna split the screens so that uh, you guys and girls can see that uh, you know uh, what we're doing as we create that model okay um, and uh, and everything so let's go ahead and I'm gonna drag this over to the right a little bit so y'all can see where it lays out 
All right, so the first step is I'm gonna work from the foundation up. Uh, we, are, we have one level here that we're starting with. We're gonna be creating more levels as we go. Uh, but we're gonna start building the components in this first level and the first uh, component is gonna be the outside ring. The outside ring, we're gonna go into the Create Shape tool. Now I want this ring to be flat on the top but I wanna have a nice bevel, a nice bevel around the edges, like a chamfer if you will on both edges. So I'm gonna use the angular profile for my model. Uh, my angle is going to be uh, 45 degrees. Do I want to go 45? No, I'm going to go 30 degrees. I'll keep it at 30. My base height, this is how tall I want my model to be. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, one inch. No, uh, let's go thicker. Because if I want to, if I build this model at a certain size, I'm able to scale it up or down. And as I scale it down, I'm sacrificing detail. I'm losing detail on the Z. So when I scale down X and Y, Z scales down as well. So I want to build this, uh, you know, as big as I can. So I'm going to go one and I'm going to go the full one and a half, 1.5, the full thickness of my board. All right, and uh, for this now, the base height is gonna be uh, one and a half, but uh, I still have the shape height, that angular profile that's gonna get built up on top of it. So I need to, um, I'm gonna go, cause I want it all to be 1.5 when it's done. So my limit height, I'm gonna limit the height to 0.08, a little over a 16th of an inch. So I'm gonna subtract that 0.08 from here and I'm gonna make this a 1.42, okay? And it's gonna be an add mode and I'm limiting the height to a height of 0 0.08. All right, let's click apply and let's create that part, okay? So we'll generate that model and this is gonna be the ring and let's zoom in to one of the edges and everything and you'll see that I have that flat top but I have this 30 degree angle on the inside and the outside now. That's just gonna give it a little bit of, a little bit of pizzazz. All right, okay. Now, on the inside of the ring here, I need to build the foundation, the foundation that all those little hour hands and numbers and things that are gonna sit on and everything. So I need to ungroup my outside rings. So I'm gonna uh, come over here and I'm gonna click start a new component. Always click start a new component as we're building along. <clears throat> and I'm gonna close that tool for a minute I'm gonna select my grouped vectors here and I'm gonna click U to ungroup them because I want this inside vector. I need to select that. That's gonna be my inside foundation. So I'm gonna go back to the Create Shape tool. This one's gonna be a flat profile, so I'm just filling in the floor, if you will. Uh, and I'm going to go to a height of three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to click up merge. I want to merge this together, these two parts together. And I'm going to apply that. <clears throat> All right. So that's going to fill in that base there. Okay. Now the reason why I didn't go all the way to the top is because I'm going to be filling this up with numbers and, and my medallion that's in the middle and everything. And, and so I want to give myself at least if I'm going an inch and a half, you know, I want to give myself at least three quarters of an inch for my, my medallion or my numbers and all that stuff. They're going to probably be a little bit lower than that, but I want to um, give myself some room. If I need to raise that foundation up, I'll be able to do that. Okay. Now I'm, I'm this far in, right? And I, I haven't even stopped yet to hit save on my file. And gosh forbid, if the power goes out, we have major storms today in Florida here. 
uh, I'd lose everything. So let's take a second and take a breather and go file save as. We want to save early and save often. And this wasn't too early, right? But at least we'll be able to save often after this. And I'm going to call this the uh, watch class. Uh, watch model class. Modeling. Modeling. Laney, learn how to spell class. And hit save. All right. All right. So far. Okay, we experienced a little bit of buffering there, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for that. Not sure why, but um, it's not, I mean, damn, I'm, this is happening to me each week. I think it's my ATEM Mini Pro. Uh, the video goes into my ATEM Mini Pro, uh, and then it disperses over the internet, and... I don't know if my cache is full over there, but I'm sorry about that. We buffered a little bit, so I apologize. Now, what I was saying, I don't know if it actually, if you heard what I was saying, but we're gonna build the inner bead now, and it's gonna also have that 30 degree angular uh, chiseled look, sorry to it, uh, with the flat top. And my height from the base, this floor, to the top of the model is, uh, three quarters right uh, so I'm gonna be flattening it off at that 0.08 again so I want to subtract that 0.08 from this three quarters so I'm actually going to use the math uh, 0.75 minus 0.08 equals that's 0.67 and I'm gonna click apply got those two little inner vectors selected okay and that's gonna create this inner bead right here don't worry about this big gap that's in the middle uh, right here. We're going to be uh, filling that up. And also, if I look at my uh, pyramid here, it didn't really flatten off the way I want. So I'm actually going to come back and reduce that limit to height. That limit to height. Uh, I'm going to reduce that uh, to... 0.04 and I'm going to add 0.04 to this so that'll make it 0.071 I'm going to click apply I want that nice flatness on the top I don't know how well you can see that but I want that nice flatness I don't want it to come as a as a uh, pyramid there I want it nice and flat uh, there on that inner bevel and like I said don't worry about this big gap right here in between because when we add the draft to these parts when we add the draft to these parts uh, it's gonna spread things out and blend them together you'll see that uh, here in just a bit so let's come back here and we've got our outer ring and our inner ring of the clock cool Let's uh, start a new component. All right, and now I'm gonna come in and select my little outer dimples there, my outer circles. And this one's gonna be a curved profile. I'm gonna go 60 degrees on the curved profile. No base height, because I'm actually gonna be subtracting it from that surface. So I want it flush with the top of the surface and I want it just to go down to a 60 degree profile. So no limit, no limit, 60 degrees with no base height and I want it to be a subtract. And I'm gonna click apply to create that dimple. Okay. All right. All right, start a new component. Always click that button to start a new component and uh, bear with me a second. The, uh, my throat was getting dry. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start uh, building up 
the uh, the our dashes and all that stuff. So for the numbers, let's make sure I select all of them and all the dashes, uh, the miniature ones and all. This is going to be a flat profile. It's going to have a base height. Now these aren't going to be as tall as the clock face. They're going to be recessed down a bit. Uh, so I'm going to go about uh, 0 0.5, too many decimals there, 0.5. And flat profile, 0.5 base height. It's going to be an add. We're adding it. We want it sitting on top of that other model. We're adding it to that other model. And we're going to click apply to create those numbers and dashes. Okay. So we got those in here. All right. Cool. So now I'm going to, so it makes it easier for y'all to see what these things are. I'm going to go to my view and I'm going to use shadow shading. Uh, that'll kind of put some shadow outline around uh, the model. And I'm not using the highest resolution. I'm using an extremely high, but not the highest. So things look a little uh, rough around the edges right now, uh, but they will be smoothed out and drafted, drafted then smoothed at the end. And it's really going to look good when we're all said and done. Um, and, uh, and all. So uh, let's get that back up here. Uh, let's take a pause for a second here. Brooks Martin says, uh, is there a difference between a negative angle versus extracting? So there are, uh, there are negative angles uh, that we can do. Uh, we can go from zero to positive 90 or zero to negative 90 uh, on our angles. And um, it would still be, if we did it as a negative, we would still kind of be in an add mode, but we'd be going down versus an add going up. Okay. So uh, an example would be, let's say that I select, let's select uh, start a new component. <clears throat> and if I select uh, this group here and I went with, let's say an angle and I went with a negative 60, it's still in kind of an add combine mode, but when I create uh, that part, uh, it's going to subtract those in, right? So they're built up, they still have the base height, but the angle is reversed, right? So in this case, I don't want that. We're gonna go with a positive 60, or no, no angle at all. This is a flat profile. Uh, half inch tall, but that would uh, that's what a negative angle does. So Brooks, uh, positive angle would build the pyramid up, negative angle would build it down, right? All right, same with the dome and a dish, our curve profiles and stuff. Okay, so I've got the hour hands built in here, and I also want the uh, let's start a new component. Uh, I should have just did the numbers, uh, the twelve and the six at the same time, but. We'll keep things separate. So let's grab the 12 and the 6. Hold that shift key when you're selecting more than one item. Same flat profile, half inch. We'll build that up. All right. So now I'm going to go into the maximum view here, right? And uh, I mean, hell, you know, other than putting in whatever we want in the center, uh, you know, I've seen. Um, uh, clock faces with all kinds of cool center medallions and stuff uh, but uh, we could fill it in with whatever you wanted you know uh, and all um, but as far as the actual clock face and building the model we're done right as far as this goes we're done with the actual building of the components now we need to kind of uh, clean them up and things okay so we're gonna close this tool and uh, Everything so far has been built on level one, right? I haven't inserted any new levels or anything at this point. Uh, everything is on level one, but I am going to uh, kind of preempt myself and insert level two. 
uh, because two of these components are gonna have to get merged together where they blend together, but they're still added on top of the level that's below it. So those two components uh, will, when I create them and everything, will be moving them up to the level two. They're gonna be inside of level two combining and merging with each other, but as a group, they will be adding to the level that's below. So they'll be taking on and sitting on that flat surface that's below. They won't be merging into it. I'll give you an example. If I, uh, well, let's give you an example by actually creating what I want to create. I'm going to turn off every one of the uh, components that I have here. Okay. Going to uncheck those. And that'll hide my whole model. Save early, save often, right. Uh, we'll save after we uh, turn this next one on. Um, as a matter of fact, let's do that now. Let's go over to our drawing tools and hit the little save current file. Let that save. Thanks for the reminder, Tim and uh, Big Daddy Fish. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's go back to the modeling tool there. Now here, when I'm creating a draft, a draft is typically used, it's a term that you would hear when you're uh, doing injection molding uh, and stuff, or if uh, you know you are doing, let's say, concrete work in a form and all, you're adding a draft uh, so the part can come out of the injection molding better and all. Well, in my case, for using the draft, I'm not doing injection molding, but I wanna give the base of my model some meat. So I want to widen the base out with a nice angular draft and I want to give it some meat. It's not going to be much of an angle, but there's still going to be some. So the first one that I'm going to start with is my, oh, hold on a second. Let me turn them all off again. Deselect them. I'm going to start off with component three. Uh, and component three is my angular ring here, the small narrow ring. Now, when we're creating a draft, uh, typically I will create a draft on the models individually because when you create a draft, it creates a draft on the visible model. And on my visible model, some drafts may vary. I might have a 15 degree draft on something, a 30 degree draft, a 22 degree. And so I, 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 I've gotten into the habit of creating them separately. So for this, for component three, I'm going to come into the create draft tool and I'm going to do a 15 degree draft. So I'm going to click apply. Let it build that draft. And it's just gonna give that meat, you know, in the middle there. All right, now notice that the shape that it created, well that's because, let's close the draft tool here. When it creates a draft, Number one, it creates it as a merge instead of an add. I need this to be, you know, an add. But it also uh, creates the whole new model with that draft. And so my original component three is still visible as well. So it's kind of got one stuck with the other, right? So what I want to do is I want to drag this model with draft down and I'm going to put it next to my component three. I kind of keep them together. I want to right click and change the combine mode to an add. And I want to uh, take the component three and turn it off. Okay. Now these components, it says model with draft, right? I could come in and uh, give it a name, right? Or something and stuff. Uh, but in this case, I don't really need to. Uh, and you'll see now that ring looks much different. It's got this angular draft on it. So it's kind of widened it out at the base, okay, by that 15 degrees. Cool. 
All right, so my next component, let's go ahead and turn that one off. Let's come into my next component here, which is gonna be component four, and this should be my second hands. Nope, those are the dimples, those stay, leave those alone. Uh, let's go to component five. I should have known it was a subtract, it's the only subtract in the, in the design. Uh, but component five, that'll be my second hands. And now let's be professional, let's go rename, we'll call this our uh, seconds. Let's call this model our inner ring. All right, and on my seconds here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a, the same 15 degree draft. Now if we go, and let's, let's zoom in on this one this time, let's get up here to the, so you can see this. Um, the, uh, if we go too drastic, 45 or 30 and all, it really just mushes them together at the base and stuff. Uh, I want them, they're gonna kind of blend a little bit uh, in, the, in the bottom, but uh, I, wanna, I want that nice little 15 degree angle. Again, you see how it kind of adds it on top. Now let me show you why it's doing that, why it's not, why it's got one sitting on the other. Because when I'm creating this, without realizing it, my level two is selected here. And so every component that I create, every draft that I'm doing, it's gonna create this new model, it's putting it up in that level two, right? And uh, I need to make sure that level one is active and selected. I need to take this and I'll drag this down above the seconds. And you see now it kind of merges them together because that model was created as a merge. But notice when I was in level two, because level two is an add mode, it, put it, it stacked it on top, right? Well, I don't want this model to be a merge. I want it to be an add to add on to my base, and I need to turn the seconds off, okay, because they don't need to be in there anymore. So if we look now, we now have our uh, numbers here and everything, and our dashes, they have just this nice uh, bevel to them and all, and it's gonna be much easier for my router bit when I'm carving for it to kind of ramp up, like it's like driving up a ramp uh, when it's carving, rather than having to stop, raise up, and then come down, you know? especially if I'm using a uh, angled uh, tapered ball nose bit, I'm gonna get a much better cut with this than I will on a kind of a straight wall, okay? Uh, and uh, control plus S equals save. Thanks, Steve, man, that's cool, yeah. I love keyboard shortcuts, control S. There we go. All right, so we got our second hand there, and I'll, uh, um, Kool-Aid, give me just a second, and I'll jump on your question. Um, but we got our second hands there. We've got them uh, drafted, our numbers and all. Great. Let's go ahead and turn that model off to hide it. And then I'm just step by step, one model at a time, right? Okay. Now I'm going to take this model with draft here and I'm going to rename it. Uh, and I'm gonna rename it to seconds with draft. All right. Okay, so component six are my hour hands uh, and everything. Make sure I got level one active this time so it puts it in this. It's gonna put it at the top of the level but it'll at least put it in that level. And I'm gonna go into the draft tool, same 15 degree angle, rinse and repeat. And while that's creating a uh, question off subject, I'm getting random lockups uh, running G code with Mach 3. I know you're not a Mach 3 guy, but what I hear online is EMI is probably the problem. I bought a meter uh, to see what is actually going on. So you're getting random lockups. God, I'm not a Mach 3 guy at all. Um, anybody run Mach 3 that might be able to answer uh, Kool-Aid's question? Kool-Aid, I'm not gonna be able to answer that one, bud. Uh, I'm not a Mach 3 guy at all. It's a little bit uh, before my time. Um, but let me see the second part of this question. Around my controller and everything, 
uh, how much interference is excessive? Uh, you know, would you know about anything? Well, you know, of course, you're going to get emission, you know, uh, electronic interference. You'll get uh, static electronic interference sometimes uh, from larger shop backs or vacuum systems. Okay. Uh, and uh, also your controller cables, uh, your motor controller cables, uh, your X, Y, Z and things. Uh, those running in that drag chain and stuff, those also emit some emissions as well. And they could affect things like, uh, you know, sometimes they could affect the pulse width modulation on a laser and stuff. Uh, but uh, the vacuum and it's static, uh, you'll see, you can look up videos on YouTube and stuff and you'll see that they'll ground that, uh, they'll run a ground coil around the vacuum hose and run it out to ground. Uh, so it has a place for that discharge to go to because sometimes that uh, static electrical interference could affect uh, things and stuff. But as far as, um, you know, when there's interference, it causes the, uh, you know, it could cause the motors to do funky things. It could cause things to happen. And so it's not necessarily a Mach 3 thing, um, but um, the, the term lockup, that's where I'm throwing off. Because you if, if there's any minor interference or interference at all, the signal could get sent wrong and your, your, your router might go off path or, you know, or, or it could just go kind of, you know, a little loopy there or something. And, you know, like, whoa, what the hell is it doing and everything. Um, but I've never really had it lock uh, or, or I never really uh, I've never really heard of an electronic emission uh, causing a lockup. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know if Mach 3 reads differently or something, but, uh, you know, we'll go from there. All right. So we've got our draft here. OK. Uh, on these hour hands and 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 Kool-Aid that's not much of an answer. I'm really am not <laughs> Really, I'm not a Mach 3 guy uh, So I'm gonna drag this model down to uh, component 6, which is gonna be uh, Number one, it's gonna be right-clicked and changed to an ad number two. I'm gonna right-click on it again and I'm gonna rename it to my hours with draft And I'm going to turn off component six. All right, we're nearly there. All right, let's go now. Component number seven should be my 12 and my six. Uh, my number is 12 and six. And the same thing, 15 degree draft. I like the 15 for these uh, numbers and all because I don't want it too wide and fat and bulky looking. I want it to look like a really high end, uh, you know, watch face or something. Uh, you know, whatever. So I just want a little bit of draft to the numbers. You can see that change there. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Let's now go uh, and change this to an add. Combine mode, add. I'll rename it. Uh, 12, 6 numbers. All right, turn off that component 7. Okay, so now I have uh, created a draft on everything except for my outside ring. My outside ring, uh, I'm going to also create a draft on, but this time it's going to be a 30 degree draft. So we're going to go into our outside ring the draft and I'm going to go 30 degrees for this one and apply that that's going to be the outside face and I want that outside the outside edge to have a, a decent 30 degree bevel uh, on the outside and the inside too but the inside you won't even really see but uh, that much but the outside I definitely want so now this one is going to build the draft on this big ring it's going to take just a second uh, to do so and um, we'll uh, go in and oh you guys that, that drummed up a big old conversation uh shielding the cables yeah shielded cables are a must uh let's see here my spindle is twisted no shield oh your spindle cable is non-shielded cable really
All right, I'm going to uh, let you guys um, I'll let you guys have that conversation uh, on Mach 3. <laughs> um, but uh, when I started working with Digital Carver, I'm a customer of Digital Carver too. I bought my Digital Carver from them in 2014. And I'm just trying to talk to fill the space just for a moment while this calculates this draft on this bigger uh, 24 inch ring here. But um, uh, just, just, just as I come into Digital Woodcarver, they were just phasing out Mach 3 because they used to provide Mach 3 uh, and Bobcat Cam with their CNC's uh, back in the day. Um, and uh, I came in just as we switched over to Planet CNC TNG. I love that program. Uh, it was CNC USB controller back in the day and then the TNG, the next generation, it was the new iteration of that is awesome. Uh, but um, when I started working with Digital Wood Carver, many of the users uh, used Mach 3. And I wasn't much good in the customer service on, on the Mach 3. Planet CNC, CNC USB controller, I, I was great with and good and all still am to this day but when somebody called me and they needed help with their Mach 3 uh, I, 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 I turned them over to the owner of the company Burl Tishner and Burl helped them he was very good with Mach 3 but uh, <laughs> yeah yeah it was uh, I was so thankful not to get into Mach 3 I've looked at that user interface I've looked at the back end of it and everything and uh, God help me It's a mess. And then Mach 3 is an open source software, so there's so many user add-ons, so, you know, codes and stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, when Mach 4 came out, it was closed uh, source, and none of the Mach 3 add-ons were compatible with Mach 4. I don't know if they ever fixed that or changed that or whatever. I, I haven't really followed and stayed on top of that and everything. But there's just so many add-ons and this and that, and and uh, you know where, where you can create your own code and add in that feature and this feature and it's just gotten so convoluted um, in my opinion it's just so cluttered with shit that it's just uh, and I don't like the preview window it's really small unless they change that as well uh, I like to be able to see what I'm carving and stuff and everything but um, I, Mach 3 is a pioneer and it's been around forever runs all kinds of machines uh, it's a workhorse, uh, you know, and it's great for people doing DIY kits and stuff. Um, but uh, I was just not one that ever fell in love with it because I, you know, I was using my controller, the Planet CNC TNG. So, yeah, we're almost wrapping up here on this uh, this draft. This draft is a little bit bigger because it's taking all the segments of that ring and it's got to pull them out and stuff. Uh, and on that 23 inch uh, outer radius and the 20 inch inner radius so it's got to build all those segments out and all so it takes just a little bit longer to process uh, but we're, we're 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 coming right to the end we're about 80 percent in yeah Chris as far as doing a deep dive on Mach 3 I, I could imagine it would be very hard to have someone do a deep dive on Mach 3 because there's so many user um, input apps here or whatever, I don't know what they call them, add-ons or whatever that, you know, their own codes and things. And there's so many out there trying to do a deep dive on all of its functions and features and, and everything. Oh, that would, that's gotta be insane, insane. I guarantee if somebody ever did, that would be a very popular video. Because Mach 3, Mach 3, even though you know it's a, it's a little bit older in style and stuff like that, um, it's like I said, it's still a workhorse and everything, and a lot of people are still using it. Uh, and uh, so, um, a deep dive, I bet that would be a popular video for sure. All right, so I've got that outer ring created, and looking at it now empty the outside uh, I don't like it daggum it bear with me folks I'm gonna bring that down I thought 30 was gonna be my magic number 
Uh, let's go. Twenty-two and a half. Now nah, let's go fifteen. I'm gonna stick with fifteen. I like fifteen. All right, we're gonna stick with fifteen. Let this really quickly build over. Uh, it'll be much quicker on this one. Then I'll delete the other one. All right. Yeah, if you like what we're doing so far and you're finding anything interesting uh, out, uh, definitely hit the likes, like button, thumbs up, subscribe if you're, this is your first time watching. We do classes every Tuesday night live. Uh, some people say I talk too much, but hey, you know. <laughs> but uh, I'm hoping that um, the stuff that I'm talking about is important. We're about an hour and 12 minutes into class right now. We are literally at the tail end of this. Once we get the drafts done, I can then import the uh, model that I'm gonna use uh, for my center medallion, and we're gonna be finished. So, um, and uh, kind of uh, to a prelude, uh, how many in the group, because I know I have a group that ranges from older to younger and all that, uh, how many of you have seen the series uh, or read the books Game of Thrones? And how many of you are, you know, like Game of Thrones and are, are, are a fan in any way? All right. So I've got the 15 degree draft. Yeah, much better. Let's go ahead and close that out. I want to delete. I try to keep things clean. So let's delete the model that we're actually not using there. Uh, and once again, uh, I'm going to drag this down above my component one because that's what it is. I'm gonna change it to an add. I'll go ahead and rename it. This will be my outer. Do they call it the bezel on a clock? Is that is that what that is? Or is the bezel like the top ring? I don't know. I'm just gonna call it outer ring. I think it's a bezel. All right, so we've got all of our components done. Now we can turn on each of our models. Uh, so I'll turn on the ones that I've named, my outer ring and my inner ring. The flat component two, that's my base, that's the base, right? So that it will uh, come in here. Um, we, let's rename that. Let's call it base, right, base. All right, so uh, the seconds with draft, let's turn that on. The hours with draft. And the numbers. Now, remember I said that I had two models that needed to go up into level two? Well, let me show you the two and let's see if I can zoom in and let's see if you can kind of recognize so because of the uh, the draft, thank you, Lainey, the draft, my inner ring and my second hand numbers, they are uh, kind of colliding right here. You see this kind of nastiness right here? Uh, let's see if I can tilt it to the side a little bit. All right. And so I need them to merge together because they're actually touching, right? And so when it touches, it kind of rolls it up the side when they're adding together, it kind of rolls them up the side. And so I need them to merge together. I need to change them to a merge, but I need them to still be added to the clock base, right? So I need to take the second hand with draft and I need to drag it up to level two. And I need to change the combine mode to a merge, okay? I also need to take my inner ring, drag that up to level two, and change that to a merge, a mer mer merge, combine mode merge. Okay, 
And when it does, they will blend together. Did you see how it cleaned that up? It blended them together and everything. And uh, now I have my space in between there that once was filled, okay? So they are merging with each other. Those two items are merging with each other in that group, in that level. But that whole level as a whole is being added to uh, the base behind it. If I would have changed them to merge, but they would have been down in level one, then it would have merged with the base and it would sink and disappear, right? Okay, so I need it in a separate level. Cool. <laughs> Learn Mach 3. All right, let's see here. All right, cool. All right, so y'all answered my question on Game of Thrones. And the reason why I ask is I, I kind of enjoyed that. I, wa I enjoyed it enough. I watched uh, uh, all the seasons twice and um, really enjoyed that. And I thought, man, what could I do my center with? And uh, I was a real big fan uh, up until the end of Khaleesi, the Mother of Dragons, the Unburnt, the you know, blah, 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 you know, uh, and uh, I liked her symbol. So uh, for my centerpiece here, uh, I'm going to import a model and it's going to be an OBJ file. So when it imports, it's not going to import flat. It's going to import up on its side because the creator kind of created it on its side somehow or another. He wasn't in the right plane when he was modeling it and stuff. I did not create this model. Uh, it's a model that I purchased. Um, and um, uh, it, was, uh, it was about $57 uh, for the model. And um, but the model when it's imported, it comes on its side, which you'll see in just a minute. So we got to rotate it and uh, uh, center and size it up and stuff um, so let's go ahead and come in here and let's zoom into this uh, and you can see the models up on its side right so uh, we're looking basically it came in at the top and the top of the heads are the top so I need to be the front I need to select front on the orientation okay because I want to see the front of it and it's only for 57 bucks. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger than five inches, uh, but I'm going to size it up to 12, 12 by, I'm going to keep the aspect ratio. Excuse me, man, I got the hiccups so bad. I don't know why guys, uh, 12 by, um, uh, 11.084 is the uh, aspect ratio. And I'm going to click apply to lock that in to apply that. I'm going to make sure the model is centered. Uh, and then on, I'm going to click the button to position and import. This is version 11, so the, the, the import method has changed a little bit. They've added some additional windows and stuff. It used to be all in one long window in the earlier versions. But uh, I want to take my model plane and slide it all the way down so the model's sitting on top of the zero plane, uh, which is basically kind of the center point of the board. Uh, and when you, let's see if I can zoom in some more and stuff and when the model you know when it's centered you'll see that this blue area kind of turns to kind of a faded blue uh, you know and everything and the light blue area here uh, that's everything that's above the zero plane and, and and the dark blue is everything below so I need to bring that zero plane down so the models on top right all right so we'll go ahead and click on import All right, so now on my model here, it's just at 12 inches, man, it just come in to the uh, uh, the numbers here and everything. But uh, so I'm gonna take my 
dragon and go into the size tool and let's bring it down to 11.875 lock the aspect ratio and click apply bring that down a bit and it brings it right on the head it brings the oh, hold on a minute don't drag it around control Z to undo all right it brings the head just under the number two it's kind of touching right there and let's go over here and uh, the tail area is you know kind of sitting on the six and all so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more let's go uh, 11 and 3 quarters on the height bring that in all right so I've got this and everything now I want that uh, the dragon itself the three-headed dragon or the three dragons um, I want that to be uh, brought up a little bit taller okay I want it I would like the height of it to be just about the height of the numbers uh, at least or maybe even a little bit taller so I'm going to uh, come in and uh, I'm going to create a base or a foundation for it and since I am going to create a base or a foundation for it, I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit more. Not much more. I don't want to lose too much. Let's go another. Uh, let's go 11.625 on the height. There we go. And my last model component for the evening, I got to draw a vector for it. I'm going to go into the center of my material and draw a ring out. And let's make that ring 11.5. Good. And let's get the dragon to fit on there. I'm actually going to hold down the shift key and drag it out myself. And on this component, I'm going to go, or that vector, I'm going to go into create a shape. I'm going to create a, uh, radius or a curved profile. I'm going to go a full 90 degrees. I'm going to go with a base height. I should have done my math before this. Daggummit. Hold on a second. Let me see how tall my dragon is. Bum, 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 bum. Go into the properties and it's 0.6173. Let me write that down or I'll forget. 0 0.6173.6173. All right, so now let's go back into that uh, create shape tool. Uh, the base height is going to be 0 0.75 minus 0 0.6173 equals. So just a little over an eighth of an inch. All it is is just a little platform going 90 degrees curve profile but I'm limiting the height uh, let's go let's limit to a point 0.0625 a sixteenth of an inch you son of a gun let's click apply I think I need to I probably need to bring that down to a um, a little bit smaller now if we go into the 3d view okay I've just basically all I've done is just kind of create this medallion if you will for the dragon dragon to sit into and all and um, the 90 degree curve profile let me zoom in to this ring that I just created 
the 90 degree curve profile with the flat depth basically is what gives me my round over edges okay so I want those edges to one of those edges to be slightly rounded over and um, I uh, by creating that curved 90 degree profile and then flattening it off at a certain height as it goes up to curve it then flattens off and that's what creates that round over okay all right so with that um, my dragon the dragon I want to add a draft to that and I also want to add a draft to the ring that I just created and now when I create the draft on the ring it might touch my hour hands and if so I'm gonna have to merge those two together and then add them um, on another layer on another level just like we did with the outer ring and the second hand numbers so let's close this tool we're done with it for now um, so the medallion base let's turn off all the other models remember we it, it, a um, a draft is created on a visible model so I want everything except for what I'm creating the draft on to be visible uh, I want everything to be except for, I'm sorry to be invisible so let's go through and turn off the uh, 12 hour numbers the uh, hour hands or little dashes the base and the outer ring so I don't want anything visible I want nothing visible except for um, for the first part except for this ring here and with this ring I'm gonna go into create a draft I'm gonna go 15 degrees okay I'm going to close that model with draft I'll just call this the platform that'll be what I rename it to uh, center platform I don't know whatever you want to call it turn this off and make it an add combine mode add now what I'm gonna do is just to make sure to see if it actually is touching my hour hands I'm gonna go and turn my hour dashes on uh, hours with draft and if they mesh together uh, in things uh, you know then I'll change it but they're not they're not touching right you can see that off to the side you know I've got plenty of space there wonderful so let's turn those off turn that platform off as well and let's turn on the dragon and I want to add a draft to the dragon. It's too fragile in some of the places around the tail and stuff. Very fragile from what I saw in the model. And so I want to add a little bit of base meat to that. So if we look at the uh, dragon when it comes back up here, uh, in if I zoom in, you know, at the tail and at the points here on the spikes on the tail and stuff, it's just a little thin and uh, and all. And so I'm going to add a draft to that. So let's bring that uh, center view. Let's tilt it just a little bit and go into the draft tool. And again, I'm just going to I'm going to stick with 15 throughout this whole thing. All right. So let's see what we got here while that's creating the draft. Let's let's see here. Uh, Google Drive, the last window update. Um, all my CNC video files are noted. Well equipment recovery thanks for the offer uh, you're welcome blue knight uh, you're welcome Lenny helps me so I try to help people as well there you go thanks blue knight appreciate that all right so I believe the draft was created uh, let's go ahead and close that tool uh, let's rename this to dragon dragons uh, let's go and turn that off 
let's change this to combine mode to add because I want it sitting on top of the platform. And now let me zoom in here and let's look at uh, the, uh, the model. Basically, we've added some base meat to the uh, tail and everything. All right, so uh, we can now turn on all of our models. So our center platform and our dragon. We can turn on the uh, numbers. We can turn on the hours, marks, you know, the hour marks. We can turn on our entering and our second hands, our base, and our outer ring. Okay, now, very important, <coughs> excuse me. All right, now, everything looks you know good so far and all but I want to do a little bit of smoothing now I want to add a little bit of finesse over the whole thing a little bit of smoothing on the edges kind of give them a little bit of roundness and stuff not too much and so uh, before I can do that before I can smooth things out um, I need to uh, come in and turn off level one I'm gonna hide it right now okay uh, and on level two, these two selected items, gonna go ahead and select them. I'm gonna bake them together, right? But not them, right? Those are my originals. I don't ever wanna mess with my originals, okay? Uh, I want them to stay separate components in case I have to go back and change something, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna insert a new level and I want to hold down the control key and drag these two selected items up into here and that's going to drag a copy of them up okay I'm gonna turn off level 2 and on this copy I'm gonna bake those two together now they're merging together so when I bake them together it's like taking water and flour and baking it together it's now a funky biscuit or whatever um, or a very tasteless biscuit but uh, the um, they're merged together now they're they're baked together as one they're not two separate items anymore so it doesn't matter what level I put them on now um, the next thing is all of my models all my originals down here I want to put on a level and I'm gonna put them into uh, level three as well uh, so, but I had to bake those two together first before I could. And now that they're baked, I can change the combine mode to add because they're merging with each other. They were baked together as a merge, but now they're going to be adding to everything else. And now I can come into my level one on my uh, models that are selected. I'll hold down the control key, uh, turn that one off. No, not turn it off, but deselect it. And I will select all of my checked off models here. And this is the final step. And while they're selected, I'll hold down the control key and drag them up into level three as well. Holding that control key makes a copy. So I'm not dragging the original, I'm dragging a copy up. Okay. All right, as soon as that's finished, I'll go ahead and uh, hit control S. For save, we're gonna try that handy dandy little shortcut. Why didn't that work? Ah, control S didn't work. So we'll go back and hit save here. Am I missing a key? Is it control alt S? I don't know. Might be control S, but it didn't work for me for some reason. Hmm. I'll have to investigate that. All right, let that save. And then we're going to add the smoothing. Uh, and when it does the smoothing, it wants to bake everything together. That's why I made a copy, right? I'm baking that copy. And then once I bake it together, it's, a, it's one component, not a bunch of different ones. So I want my originals that I could go back and fix or alter or change if I needed to, you know, uh, change something. But I need my baked model 
Um, so I can turn off level one again. Okay, and now, now, here, I can uh, select the models here. And come up to the smoothing tool and wrap this puppy up. Components must be baked before editing. Click OK to continue. So now they are all baked into one model. In the, I want to preserve the transparency. I don't want to add any material in the smoothing and everything. I just want to preserve the transparency. All the, you know, I don't want to add build off to it. And I'm literally just going to watch my design here, okay? And I'm going to uh, add smoothing appropriately, you know? So if I go too far, let's say I went with maximum smoothing. It's gonna really roll over those edges and everything and just lose all the detail, right? So I just want to add a small amount of smoothing uh, just to kind of break the edges a little bit. So let's back it up to none so you can see it as none. Okay. And so let's kind of, uh, we'll get it, we'll find a focal point here. So if we focus on these edges and everything and, and the dragon all, as I pull this in a little bit, Okay, it's just gonna slightly soften up those edges, those upper edges, okay? Slightly soften everything up. And that is our finished model. Uh, in this case, you know, I would uh, drill a hole in the center as soon as I got my clock mechanism and found out what size, you know, the uh, shaft is. Uh, I'd draw a circle and that'd be a pocket cutter, or a drilling tool path, depending on what size it is with my CNC. Uh, this would get flipped over and I'd cut out the pocket for the mechanism uh, But as far as the actual model itself This is our model, right? This is our cool little watch face Now if I wanted to make this smaller and add the little uh, kind of round thing on the side and like I said You know add the little arms that come out that uh, where the hinge goes for the strap I could build the uh, each sections uh, for the strap and I could literally hang a whole watch on the wall uh, but I'm just, this is just the watch face, right? So it's just a clock. So it's a wall hanging clock uh, with some, you know, hours and seconds and things like that. But three headed dragon, uh, we got a Game of Thrones uh, themed clock here going on. And um, yeah, so we have, uh, let's click OK. Always click OK if you're smoothing, if you're happy with it. I'm happy with it. Uh, and uh, so we started off in a summary. Uh, we started off with creating the vectors very simply and easily. We uh, then turned around and built the components up as needed, adding, subtracting, or merging, depending on what it called for. Uh, we then made a copy of all of our individual components into new levels so that those components could be baked together as one model, keeping our originals in separated and intact. Uh, and we applied some smoothing to give it just a little bit of uh, a nice, just a nice breaking off the breaking off those edges and stuff and all. The draft helps out quite a bit with giving it base meat, and then we just add a little bit of smoothing just to break those upper edges a little, uh, kind of uh, smooth them out and uh, we have a pretty cool clock. Now we can put anything we want. As you saw in the beginning, uh, we had the uh, US Army watch, right? Uh, you know, it could be, you know, uh, military base, firefighters, law enforcement, uh, Game of Thrones, uh, race cars, Harley Davidson, whatever, right? You know, uh, be careful what you put in there, you know, uh, you know and stuff, but um, uh, this is gonna hang up in, you know, on my wall and everything. It's not gonna be something I'm selling at all because I bought the Dragon model, right? I don't own the rights to sell it and everything, but I built that clock, right? So I could sell the clock without the medallion in the middle and you can add whatever you want. So I might do this for a $6 download for those people that uh, don't have Aspire and they'd like to have this model. Uh, we, we, you know, we'll do it for, you know, 
I don't know, six or seven bucks uh, per download. Uh, and um, and then you can add whatever you want to it. Give you an example, really last, 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 last example here. If I bring over a tab, right? And I go to design and make.com. That's a Vetric site uh, where they sell 3D models. Uh, I could go into, um, let's go, I'll just type in military just for the moment. And I've got all kinds of cool uh, military symbols and things that I could use, firefighters, law enforcement, police. But what I, if I was doing a military one, I would probably, uh, let's see here, where is it at? Number three. Oh, where'd it go? Any one of these would be fine, but there's one particular one. Yeah, here we go. So like uh, this model here, uh, Department of Defense, you know, uh, that would be a nice emblem uh, middle piece. Oops, daggum. I keep uh, dropping that. Uh, lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Uh, design and make dot com. Store shop uh, compass right we could do uh, kind of a circular compass in the middle uh, like a star compass for a nautical theme going on there uh, something cool like that so it's a compass watch and I keep closing the tabs but you get the idea right we could go there's all kinds of you know uh, things that I could go to design and make and purchase and you know, for medallions, or I could create my own. Um, I could, uh, you know, uh, fill it in with whatever. Yeah, so fun stuff. So we did a Game of Thrones theme walk. That'll wrap us up, and I hope that you like this. Now from here, it's just a matter of a 3D rough cut and a 3D finish cut. I'm not gonna create and calculate the tool pass because uh, it just takes too long and we're uh, at uh, an hour and 44 minutes I want to wrap up at an hour and 45 uh, kind of trying to slowly shorten the classes up I hope you got something out of tonight just any little thing that might be helpful to you as far as because the combining of the models and the levels all of that stuff applies for desktop and pro as well okay um, all of that stuff applies for desktop and pro as well uh, the only thing that uh, you know doesn't apply is, is uh, unfortunately desktop and pro doesn't have a draft feature uh, That's an aspire thing. Uh, it does have a bake. No, it doesn't have a bake. Sorry. It doesn't have a bake um, But it does have a smoothing and all that but how they merge add subtract how they all combine all of that stuff uh, plays a role so I hope that you might have picked up some kind of little tip hell when drawing the vectors and using the circular array tools and stuff how to add those numbers in you know how to do that rotate to rotate those uh, dashes around to get the numbers to lay out just perfectly hopefully those were good tips for you if they were hit that thumbs up button I'd really agree she greatly appreciate it, it helps the channel uh, a lot and um, yeah until next time guys let's see here how do you find Uh, Big Daddy Fish, um, how is the funding? Uh, I think you typed in finding. How is the funding for the uh, new shop going? Uh, with the models that uh, you guys uh, supported with, with uh, purchasing, uh, you know, those models and all, uh, I was able to uh, raise $2,500 towards the uh, $25,000 goal. So I really appreciate that, you know. Um, but uh, the uh, funding is going well you know I have money in the bank for that it's gonna be about six months or so before the uh, construction starts and all but um, with your help I was able to supplement about about twenty five or twenty six hundred dollars uh, towards uh, the purchase of the shop so I really appreciate all of you that purchased the um, 4th of July models the father day Father's Day models the 2a models and 
there was another one. I forget what it was. Father's Day, Fourth of July, two A, and fourth and um. That was it, I think. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna put this model up for sale. It's not gonna be very much. Um, it'll be about six dollars or so. And if you're interested in the clock face, it will not come with the Dragon Medallion. I don't own the Dragon. I can't sell that. Uh, but um, you know. I might create a uh, medallion that, that would be fun and useful or something in the middle uh, that can be added or subtracted. I don't know yet. But the clock itself as a whole without the centerpiece, you can fill in the centerpiece. Um, and if you do buy models online, try to get V3M because you can only import one STL model uh, per project in desktop and pro, right? So if you design and make is going to be the best bet for you to find some cool stuff to stick in the middle of these things uh, and get them as a V3M model file because then you can add that in, right? And stuff. But uh, yeah, I greatly appreciate all of you and all your support and everything and the funds uh, help a lot. You know, it helps a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, you know. And here's a little tip for all my subscribers uh, that, and and by the way, uh, congratulations. We are well over 6,000 subscribers so far on uh, the channel. It's growing really well at a really good pace. Um, not bad at all. I haven't done uh, a really kind of a numbers count or anything or a celebration at any point. Uh, I greatly appreciate all you. But just think, if I put this model out there, I'll put my email out there, and if, if each one of you subscribers paid even a dollar for the model that'd be six thousand dollars towards the shop building <laughs> just kidding but uh no hopefully you'll find this useful uh but i will put it out and uh and and i don't have a website yet we haven't launched the website to put it out yet so i keep talking like we have a website so let me put my email address in here laney dot shaughnessy at cox dot net in the chat not cox dot net that's my internet. Don't don't use that email address. That is nothing. Uh, Laney, that's I, literally that's not a that's not a valid email address. It won't go to anywhere. Uh, dot Shaughnessy at spindletv.com. But the uh, the first email is not a real email. It won't go to anywhere. Somebody with Laney dot Shaughnessy at Cox on that might get it, but it won't be me. Uh, Laney dot Shaughnessy at spindletv.com emails in the chat area if you're interested in this uh, you can just uh, send an email with a simple subject line that says clock face send you an invoice for it once the invoice is paid I'll send you the file um, and once again uh, it will not include the three-headed dragon that is not my model to sell it will not include that all right until next time ladies and gentlemen thanks for joining me tonight hopefully you picked up something I really appreciate all of you Let me see here. Make sure I didn't miss any claw. Um, Ronnie, I don't know how long the cut time will be on it because we did not calculate any tool pass tonight, but I would estimate a couple of hours on it for sure. Okay? Uh, but I don't have an exact time because we didn't create tool pass. We just created the model for tonight's class. Next week, I'll show you how to take these same vectors and create a similar clock with just VCarve. Uh, for those folks that have VCarve Pro and desktop and want to do this, with a V-carve toolpath and a flat depth, uh, we can create something very similar to this. Uh, and I want to show you that at the beginning of next week's class. Until next time, guys, y'all have a great night. Thanks. I'm still down here. Hold on a minute. I'm still down here. <laughs>